Yo, what up, what up, what up? What's going on? We're going to talk about the 360 deal in this video. You already know what it is. 300 to freedom. We never stop. We, ne we never give up. We keep it going. No matter what adversities we facing in life, we never stop. We keep going. We stay focused on the goal. And it's fuck the haters, man. Fuck the haters. That's, that's what I got to say, man. Fuck the haters. Fuck those trying to get in the way of the real. Fuck those trying to be a roadblock in a road, trying to keep the real from rising to the top. We're going to get to the top regardless. We're going to make it to the top anyway. But that being said, you already know this is Jada's Creek. We're going to talk about the 360 deal, what the 360 deal is. The 360 deal is a deal that became more common since the start of the 2000s, since the early 2000s. And it's a deal that record deals basically came out with in order to still make a lot of money off of artists that they sign. Being that things changed over from hard copy CDs and changed over to digital, right? When the transition went from CDs to, di to digital, the 360 deal became much more common and more popular as a way for record labels to still make a lot of money off of artists, right? So that's basically what happened. It was a transition, like a changing of the hands. My opinion on the situation is I don't know how the fuck record labels even allowed streaming services to take over, how they even allowed digital streaming platforms to basically still artists music still artists creativity still artists work and put it on a platform dirt cheap for the masses to pay a monthly fee to have access to it all i don't know i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know how the fuck they let that go down i mean to me that shit should have been illegal but for some reason they allowed it for some reason it was allowed and digital streaming platforms got big and being that this caused CD sales to drop drastically, right? Because there was no more hard copy CDs being sold like how it was back in the 90s. What happened was labels were like, shit, yo, we got to figure out a way to make money off of these artists. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's really what happened. Labels was like, yo, we ain't going to take a loss. We got to figure out a way to still, to we got to figure out more ways to make money off of these artists, if we can't make money off of their album sales, what are we gonna do? We gotta find a way to, cause this is how labels work, right? Like when you sign to a record deal, when you sign to a record label, they give you all of their connections, all of their relationships. They give you radio play, right? On the mainstream radio station in your city. Uh, they put you on the hottest podcast. They put you on the hottest blogs. They use all of their connections and power to get you the highest level of marketing possible. That's the whole point of a record deal. That's the whole point of signing to a record label. The whole point of signing to a record label is because they're going to make you look larger than life. But understand that it's a business. So they invest into you to make you big so that you can make them back more money. It's an investment. That's what it is. It's an investment. So... The 360 deal, when it we're going to read, I'm going to go to chat GPT real quick just to get more of a, a formal definition and a formal explanation of what exactly the 360 deal is. Uh, and the reason why I'm making this video is to help those of you who may be considering, any artists out there who may be considering getting a part of a 360 deal, any artists out there who want to know what it is, or if you're thinking about staying independent, this is the reason why I'm making this video is essentially to help you to make the best decision possible for yourself and for your future and for your family. That's why I'm making this video. So I'm about to go to chat GPT and ask, what is a 360 deal? I'm going to turn the light off of me for a second. And my face might get a little dark because the light is going to be off of me. But I got to do this real quick just to show you, just to explain what the 360 deal is. I'm right here. I'm right here. I ain't going nowhere. I'm right here. Uh, let me go to chat GPT. 
And I'm going to read this definition straight from chat GPT. I know it's dark right now. Stick, bear with me in this video. I don't know why this shit taking so long to come up. All right, here we go. Let me go to chat GPT and get the formal definition for, for what a 360 deal is. 300 to freedom. You already know what it is, man. We, we ain't letting nothing stop us from getting to the top. We ain't letting nothing stop us from becoming what we're destined to become. We, we don't stand for none of that bullshit. That's not what we do. Uh, all right, so I'm putting it in right now. What is a 360 record deal, right? So I'm asking chat GP, GPT that question right now. I'm going to read it out real quick. I know it's dark, but like I said... The lighting is a little bad because I'm using the computer webcam right now. I'm not on the phone. The phone has much better lighting, but I'm using the computer webcam. That's why it's dark. But anyway, a 360 record deal or simply a 360 deal is a type of contract between an artist and a record label in which the label agrees to provide financial support and promotion. But in exchange, it takes a percentage of the artist's overall revenue streams, not just album sales. In a traditional record deal, a label would typically only earn revenue from record sales or streaming. However, under a 360 deal, the label earns a share of income from various aspects of the artist's career, including music sales and streaming, concert tours and live performances, merchandising, example t-shirts, posters, endorsements or sponsorships, publishing rights, songwriting and licensing rights, the rationale behind this type of deal is that labels argue they are investing heavily in developing an artist's brand, so they should be compensated for contributing to the artist's success in multiple areas. Critics of 360 deals often argue that they can be exploited, exploitative if the artist doesn't have a strong negotiating position or if the label doesn't invest adequately in all areas of the artist's career. So that's that's basically sums it up. That basically sums it up, right? That That's what it is. It's... The record, the record label finding more ways to make money from whatever the revenues that the artist is getting. So not just album sales. Now they're getting cut off of your merchandise, your merchandising. They're getting cut off of your touring, off of your concerts. They're getting a cut off of basically other areas outside of just your album sales, which is which is was designed to make up for the lack of money that they're making in this climate in this climate where artists ain't making much album sales so you got to squat you got to scratch your head right you got to scratch your, your head and ask yourself well why the fuck isn't artists making as much album sales as they used to i mean that's the that's the biggest elephant in the room that's what i would ask and it's because they allowed streaming services to basically rob artists of the music and the ceos of this these streaming services, they getting richer and richer and richer, while basically the artist is getting broker and broker and broker. And they've allowed this to happen. <laughs> the record labels have allowed this to happen. These big companies have allowed this to happen. These execs have allowed this to happen. I don't know if you remember when Tidal came out and Jay-Z owned the Tidal, right? And I, I think I'm going to do a video on Jay-Z after this video right here. We're going to do another video talking about Jay-Z after this video. But anyway, Jay-Z was part owner, or either he was owner of title at a point, right? And he said the reason why was because he wanted to pay, he wanted to be the streaming platform that paid artists the most money per stream. And I get it, right? I understand that sentiment, right? But at the same time, it's like, there's a much better, it should have been more of a meeting, right? It shouldn't have been a meeting to get artists on title. I feel it should have been a meeting to say, yo, we ain't fucking putting our music on no streaming platforms. There ain't going to be no streaming platforms. We ain't even going to allow these streaming companies to get the licensing to even have our music on there. So how the fuck? Because at the end of the day, it's the people making the music that's bringing in the attention. It's the people making the music that's bringing the listeners. So how the fuck the owner and CEOs of the Spotify's and the Apple Music's and the title, how the fuck they getting richer and richer while the artist who's creating What's bringing the people to their platform getting broker and broker? That shit don't make no fucking sense. That shit don't make no sense. 
drop a comment below if you feel what I'm saying right now. Drop a comment below if you feel where I'm coming from. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Like, how does that make sense? How does the creators get brokered and broker, but the technological CEOs who created the platform, they're getting richer and richer? Some don't seem right by that picture. What this should have been with that title meeting, that meeting should have been about, yo, we got to negotiate better terms. If not, if if our artists ain't making a good amount of money per stream, guess what? We ain't putting none of our music on none of these streaming platforms. And the labels were supposed to back these artists in that decision. The labels are supposed to be like, yo, yo, my artists, we ain't putting our artists' music on y'all platforms. Fuck that. Nah, we're going to, fuck it. We'd rather stay selling CDs. Fuck it. If we got to, we're got we going to keep selling CDs, right? No. You said, oh, we're going to allow the streaming platforms. We're going to allow the streaming platforms to uh, pay 0. 0.000006 uh, cents per stream. It's okay. You know, nah, that shit is not okay. That shit is not okay. When you really think about it, that shit is crazy. That shit is actually ludicrous. That shit is wild. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit is wild. That shit is really wild. So that's what the 360 deal is. So if you are considering going to a label and signing a 360 deal, a recommendation, a big recommendation I will give you as an artist is, now, I've never been signed before to a major label. I've never been signed to a record deal. So, But I do know firsthand a person, my sister was signed years ago. She was signed to Warner Brothers. So I know that and I saw firsthand how that went down, right? And I also know somebody else who went to my high school who's doing pretty good with rap. And if, if, to my knowledge, I think he signed. But me personally, I never got signed. But what I'm going to tell you is if you are looking to get signed and sign, you're going to sign a 360 deal, I would recommend getting yourself your own lawyer, your own entertainment music lawyer who's going to oversee the contract and see the percentages of, you know, what the record label is going to get, what you're going to get. They got to oversee the terms and see that the terms are best suited for you and that the terms aren't going to be to your detriment, but but it's also going to benefit you as well as benefit the record deal. That's what I would recommend. Don't use no lawyer that the record label provided to you. Lose, use your own lawyer, right? Your own lawyer, your own third party lawyer, because obviously the fucking lawyer that the record label <laughs> gives you, right? That lawyer, obviously, they're going to be in the pocket of the record label. They're going to be there supporting the record label. So they're not going to give a fuck if the terms ain't in your best interest. So get a lawyer that's going to draw up a contract or suggest things in that meeting for the contract to be in your benefit. That, that's one of the key things I would say if you are considered, considering signing a 360 deal. So some artists now, there's a lot of different artists who are signed to 360 deals. And depending on how much leverage they have, depending on how much fans they got, they may be able to negotiate and leverage they have more leverage so they can negotiate more handsome terms right better term for them somebody like jay-z he uh to my knowledge he was a part of, the, of a 360 deal let me look it up real quick i'm gonna look it up right now uh what big artists are signed to 360 deals so i'm gonna look it up right now just to give you an idea that yo there are occasions where you can if you bring in a big fan base to the label and you have a large following that puts you in a position of of power because you have leverage you can now negotiate your terms because you know you're going to start making sales right out the door once you sign with this label you already got your fans you bring in your fan base in the door so they can't jerk you around they can't try to play you you have more leverage so you can negotiate and tell the record label how much percentage they should get and how much you should get right now if you coming in the door you don't got no you don't got no leverage you don't got no fucking fans you don't have really a large fan base you don't have like loyal fans who your core fans that fuck with you as an artist you can't walk in there talking and telling them what you want how you want that contract to be drawn up it's gonna be a lot harder to do because they like what everything the record label is gonna be like yo we doing everything we doing is benefiting your ass you don't got no fan base you don't got nobody supporting you <laughs> drop a comment below let me know your thoughts on this video make sure to subscribe to my channel as well by the way uh i would appreciate it if you share this video with five people you know five artists or or people you know who would be interested in this information i'm talking about in this video i would appreciate it if you share with five people you know 
Uh, and yeah, make sure to subscribe to my channel. So, all right. So it says several major artists have been signed to 360 deals, especially during the mid 2000s and beyond when these contracts became more common in the music industry. Here are a few examples of big artists known to have signed 360 deals. First, Jay-Z, he signed a 360 deal with Live Nation in 2008. Eight, worth $150 million and included not only music, but also touring, merchandise, and other aspects of his career. Okay, so, you know, Jay-Z is an older artist. At first, he wasn't signed to a 360 deal, but later on in his career, he got signed to a 360 deal because, like I said, that type of deal became a lot more popular because things moved into a digital space. Another artist who's big, Madonna. In 2007, Madonna signed a groundbreaking 360 deal with Live Nation. Once again, Live Nation worth around $120 million. The deal covered albums, touring, merchandising, and other revenue streams. Lady Gaga, you know, Kanye West, it says. Kanye West also reportedly signed a 360 deal with Rock Nation and Def Jam, covering various aspects of his brand, including touring and merchandising. Rihanna, another person, Shakira, Nicki Minaj, like other Young Money artists, Nicki Minaj reportedly signed a 360 deal with Cash Money Records that included multiple revenue streams beyond music sales. So you get the point. The point of a 360 is so that they can make money past just album sales. Because clearly, if they were only still making money from album sales, it's obvious that these record labels would go out of business eventually. It's obvious they wouldn't be making as much money eventually. So they did this. And when they did this, the only person that got the short end of the stick, the only person that got the shitty end of the stick, the only person that got fucked over with no Vaseline is the artist. The labels are still winning. The streaming platforms are still winning. The only person, the only one that got fucked over when this whole transition happened, again, once again, is the artist. <laughs> the person creating the music. The person behind the creation, behind the product, which to me is fucking absurd. Drop a comment below if you feel what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's fucking absurd, man. I just got to be real about that shit. And this is why I do what I do. This is why, you know, I come in here and I make these videos. You know, I have a background in affiliate marketing. I have a background making money online. But originally, like I said in my very first videos when I first got on YouTube, the whole purpose of me even starting to learn how to make money online is because I always had a passion for creating music. I always loved the music. Since day one, I said that. The whole reason why I even got online is because I wanted to learn how to market my music and I loved making music. That's it, period. You know what I'm saying? I said that since day one. My story never changed. It says many newer artists are also often introduced to the industry through 360 deals as they have become more common for labels looking to diversify their income sources in a changing music industry. However, the terms and conditions can vary widely with bigger artists sometimes negotiating better deals. So this goes back to my point. Excuse me. This goes back to my point that I always been saying at the end of the day, it matters that you have loyal fans. If you don't got no fucking loyal fans, you don't have no leverage, you don't have no power. If you don't got no fans who fuck with you for you and listen to your music because they like your music and they there for you, they like your image, they like your brand. If you don't got no fans, you don't have no say so when it comes to being in these executive offices. You don't have no say so. So I just want to share with you and break down what the 360 deal is. I hope you have a better understanding of it now. Uh, this is your boy Jadis Crete. Yeah, you already know. All the links is in the description below, man. If you want to get connected with me, if you have any questions, uh, I'll be there here to help. I also have a product that will teach you in three simple steps how to start building your own loyal fan base if that's what you want to do. This very three-step system is a system that I'm using myself every single day right now to build my own core fan base. That's where the root of success is going to come from for all artists, right? And whatever doors that opens up for you, wherever that leads you to the next level to keep advancing, that's the whole purpose of it. Get a core fan base, build your own fan base. That's going to open up more doors for you. That's going to make you more money. Uh, that's going to make you more attractive to the music industry. And if you want, you can get to the point where you can negotiate your own terms with the record label and get signed. But anyway, this is your boy, Jadis Cree. I'm going to see y'all at the top. I'm going to see y'all in the next video. Peace. I love y'all.